Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Each week, our hosts will be interviewing local, regional, and national business leaders to give you an inside peek into how they lead their business to success in the ever-competitive business climate. Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Today, I have a very special, unique guest for everyone. His teacher said he would never amount to anything, but God had another plan for him. From high school dropout to faith-driven entrepreneur living a life of limitless possibilities, I'd like to welcome Jonathan Rivera to the show. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Lance, thanks for having me on the show. I'm stoked to be here, and I'm practically jumping out of my seat already. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, before we get into what you do, tell us how you got here. You know, Are you from a family of entrepreneurs? Are you the first? What led you to start the Podcast Factory? Yeah, I think the the main thing is that um, when I was in school, I was kind of a, a reject, and therefore, uh, that's how the story starts. I rejected everything that they tried to teach me, rejected the box that they tried to put me in, and really got myself into a lot of trouble. Didn't even graduate, right? But after that, I was a good little boy, listened to my parents, and got a trade. That was the best that my family thought I could do, and I became an electrician for nine years, hot Florida sun, building some of the theme parks that you guys would know if I mm -hmm. talked about them. And I wasn't satisfied. And I think that's the difference between people who are living average, ordinary lives of quiet desperation. And those of us that go on to do big things is some of us accomplish things and we're like, yeah, buddy, this is it. Look at, I got the band. Like I had the band and I had the crew and all that. And when I got all that, I looked around and saw the old men around me who were working for me. I'm a 20-year-old running 60-year-old tired men. And I asked myself, is this it? Is this all I'm meant to be? And so every time I come to that juncture in life and I say, is this it? I start looking around to see what my next level is going to be. Beautiful. I love that. Uh, tell us about how then the faith interacts with what you do now. And I see you're a cigar smoker. Tell us about your favorite cigars. Yeah. So I am a, I, I am a cigar smoker. That's right. I do love, uh, what do they say? My buddy calls it a man of the leaf. I'm a man of the leaf. My buddy, and hey. I, he's like uh, digging around trying to find good cigars. Uh, right now, the Andalusian Bull is at the top of my list. But I, I, I like a lot of different cigars. I like some cheapos, too, because when you're burning a quick one, you don't want to burn a $25 stick. But mm -hmm. <laughs> but faith, dude, faith is everything. Faith is everything. And my mission is quite simply this. The right words from the right person at the right time will change your life. And I've had it happen with mentors and masterminds, hanging out with old men in, in my small groups, and they just tell me something that changes my perspective. I've always got my antenna up mm -hmm. looking for those words that could change everything. And God has blessed me. God has blessed me because not only did he give me the talent to do this, not only did he set me up with four years of learning TV productions in high school, but he's also put me in a position where I get to connect listeners with amazing people who can change their lives. And that's my business. I mean, how lucky could a man be to do this kind of thing where people talk about changing the world. And I feel like the work that I do, the work that we do here, having these conversations yeah. and listeners on the other end, we have a responsibility and we have the ability to change their lives. Yeah. It sounds like you are a lot like me where you live your life through a word, and I'm going to just read it for you and give you the definition. I'm going to give you the definition first, and I bet you can guess it. It's the protective care of God of or of nature as a spiritual power. Uh, and the context is that they found their trust in the divine blank, that's the word, to be a source of comfort. The word is providence. So it sounds like I would love to hear if you if you could tell us, maybe unpack one story where you hurt, you know, you, you, you talked about where you hear the right thing at the right time. I describe that as providence. Like th th I was on this path and God put me in these, the, all these things intersected in this sort of perfect way. And it's like, that's divine intervention. That's providence. I think we're talking the same language here, but can you give us a, can you give us an, a story of when that happened to you where somebody did say the right thing at the right time? And then that sort of changed your trajectory. I am going to take what you're saying and I, I'm going to dance with it a little bit. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. And 
And so I want to talk about how it ties into my mission and, and the faith. And when we were locked down in COVID, a lot of people went through a lot of bad things. Families broke up. People went to drinking. Things went downhill with, with a lot of folks. People lost jobs. It was a bad time. You ask me about COVID, and I'm like, those were the days. Man, I got to hang with my family. We were eating all our meals together. We were together all the time. And it was one of the most wonderful times of my life when the world shut down and I got to be here with the people whom I love most. And one of the things I would do, even though we were on lockdown, I would go walk around. I'm right. I'm downtown Orlando, so I'm right by the lake. And I would go walk around the lake to get some vitamin D3, even though they told us it was bad for us, and fresh air, even though they told us yeah. it was bad for us. And when I was doing those walks, it hit me one day when I, I, I'm just in my mind, kind of communing with God, because that's what God wants, right? He wants us to commune with him. He wants us to communicate it's communion. Right. And I'm just like, so what's next? What are we doing? What, you, what can we do about this situation? What's in our power? And, and I got a message from the Holy spirit and he told me you're doing it. And I'm what I'm doing what? walking around the park. No, you're doing it, man. You, sir, are a fisher of men. Mm -hmm. Right. And that I'm like, oh my gosh. Right. I was looking for all these other ways to serve. And he told me you're already serving with the work you're doing, but now tie your faith into it a little bit more where I'm fishing men, not only for the work that we do at the podcast factory as hosts, but for everyone who listens to us, fishing them to the light, because that's what I'm here for, brother. I am here to bring the light. And so that was a message from divine, right? That was a divine. Mm -hmm. I have other stories, but I feel like that one fits a little bit better into what we're talking about with the divine. Yeah, I would agree. Thank you. I, I appreciate the dancer on there, Jonathan, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, another reason I had you on was, I mean, there's multiple reasons that, you know, you're a fellow podcaster, you're a man of faith. I'm a man of faith as well. Um, but I, you, there were some things in your profile on Podmatch that I was reading that just stuck out to me. And I thought I got to have this guy on, like, because if he wants me to ask this question, boy, there's, there's, uh, <laughs> he and I are going to get along quite well. And that is you, you say, you say, you say that one of the questions you want to be asked is why is the customer always wrong? Oh man, our lost little sheep. They don't, they don't really know what they need or want they, what well, they know what they want right because mm -hmm. marketing helps take care of that and, and the whole world is built on that but what i what i've come to understand and i haven't been in business that long i don't know maybe close to 20 years so i, I mean i'm still figuring things out but you can't you can't sell people what they need because they're stuck on what they want and most of the time what they want isn't what they need so what we have to do is come in with an idea of, hey, I know this is what you want, right? And bring them in, even though what you want could be wrong for you, and then help unpack the right thing that they need. Like somebody tells me they need a podcast because they need more business, but then I start looking at at their business and they're, they're not writing emails. They don't have a newsletter. They're not doing lead generation. I might talk them out of a podcast, mm -hmm. right? Because they, they that's not what they need right now. And so what I see in the world a lot of times is, People know what they want, but they don't know what they need. And so we have to, if we're, if we really want to help them, we have to kind of disguise what they need wrapped in what they want. But most of the time uh, it takes some digging and some caring and, and some actual experience to uncover what it is they really need and be able to, to give them that. And that's why I say the customer is always wrong because they're thinking about what they want, but that's not always what they need. Smart, smart. I like the way you unpack that. Uh, one of the one of the keys of of uh, Alex, my business partner, and I sort of a personal and professional philosophy is that discipline equals freedom. And you have a different something equals something, and that is repetition equals reputation. Unpack that for us. Yeah, so that that's a thing. And so I I hope that you'll give me the grace to continue on the spiritual path because I'm kind of feeling 100%, it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So I went to my small group on Friday. And one of the, the things that I love about this small group is hearing the older guys, because it's it's a lot of older guys. I'm, I'm a young boy in that group. And, and hearing how the older guys think about faith and think about the Bible and the word and all that. And one of the things that I just got that I want to share is one of the old gentlemen said, imagine, he's like, I like to play this game with myself. I like to imagine that if somebody was watching me from the first 
moment I opened my eyes in the morning, how long it would take for them to know I'm a Catholic man. Mm. And, and I'm like, dude, I mean, it seems so simple, mm. but what, what are you doing with your day? Right. Mm -hmm. How are you starting your day? How are you getting into it? And it made me feel great. And this is not to brag. This is just to tell you about how I ended up here. I get up, I get dressed, and I go sit down to do a rosary and start reading my Bible. It'll take somebody about five minutes to know I'm a Catholic man. And what I'm trying to get at here is you now know that I'm a Catholic man because I've told you about that. I've told you about it a bunch of times. I keep repeating it. Reputation, right? That's yeah. my reputation. I'm, I, I am what I do. And so a lot of us say we're something and we're incongruent. And that's what I mean when I say repetition equals, don't tell me what you do. Show me what you do. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words, right? In that yeah. way. It, I, I, way. When, when, when folks tell me stories like that, I, I, I you can't help, like the human reaction I feel like is, I'm, a, I instantly put myself in, in, I'm trying, I'm putting myself in your story, right? And I thought, I just thought about yesterday and I was like, how long would it have taken them to anybody if somebody was watching me to to know that I was Catholic? It would have took it would have took them until seven thirty p.m. last night, because that's when I I was uh, I was on a garden date, and uh, with this gal, and I had I was telling her about my faith, and I said, yeah, I'm a practicing. So very interesting. That is a that is such an interesting anecdote. I hope everybody takes what they should away from that. Um, let's move on to net worth versus net work. Why do you think your net worth depends on your network? It's quite simple, man. I didn't make this up. I don't make any of this stuff up. Mm -hmm. It's all been around forever, but we, we, most of us should know. And if we don't, you will know now, uh, famous entrepreneur, Jim Rohn. And he says that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And look, I get it. Family, work high school friends, all that. Yes, yes, we can. We all, we all have those. But what we have a choice to do is upgrade them. And so if you're hanging with people that are satisfied with the status quo, or like I said earlier, average ordinary people living quiet lives of desperation, if you're hanging around those people, that's all you're really ever going to amount to because that's all you think there is. And that was why I got lucky with that story I told you about construction was I was hanging out with all those people and they would have said I was at the top of the game, but I wasn't, I wasn't the top of the game that I was put here to live. And, and so really it's about the people, you know, the people you surround yourself with elevating your game. And I think that anybody here with us, you and me right now, listening to us is one of those seekers. You are seeking something more that you are not getting in your daily life. And that's why we're so lucky right now. Yeah. We're so blessed, dude. We, we can get a podcast. We can get a library card. We can get around presidents. We can get around any kind of thinking we want. So it's a matter of choice. Even if it's not that you're sitting in the room with them, you got to start surrounding yourself with people with better thinking, more experience, who have traveled the road ahead of you so that you can elevate your game and fulfill your destiny. On that note, I would love if we could go back in time just a little bit then and talk about maybe, and I don't know if this will actually work, but if there was the a right person at the right time that maybe changed your life in the, I think one of the parts of the stories I'm missing from you is, and it's my fault being the host is like, how did you go from then I don't know if you went to, you know, if you got up to journeyman, master electrician, or, but like, what? Well, tell us about the transition from out of that over to podcasting and what you do now. So I'm going to go deep, right? I'm going to go really deep into uh, uh, what really put me on the trajectory and, and it's deep and dark. So uh, I want you guys to, to be ready for this. And I, I haven't actually framed this this way, but since we, we brought it back, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to put it together right now on the air. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like this, man. My parents told me to do that. I did it. I, and, and you know what? I made okay money, I guess. And I, and I, I did well. And I, I took pride in my work. But my mom took her life at 52 years old. Okay? And we didn't really understand it. I didn't understand it. I didn't know she was depressed. And I found out stuff afterwards, obviously, because you start asking questions. But the, this is, this is the part, man, this is hard for me. 
I saw her in the hospital, right? Because right before they wheeled her in and put her on all these machines, the last words that she said to me when I asked her, mom, how could you do this? You know, what, what happened? And Lance, what she said to me broke my heart. Work's been so hard. Like work, <laughs> not even put here for work, right? That's not even what, so uh, people could take that and say, God, why have you punished me? I took that and said, God, what are you trying to teach me? Yeah. What are you trying to show me? And I look at that and, and, and to me, that's the single greatest lesson my mother ever gave me. And she motivated me. Right. And so from there, I went into a depression. I mean, I was in my twenties. Uh, my mom just killed herself and I'm trying to figure out what, how the world works, but I was unsatisfied and she planted that seed of being unsatisfied. And so from that time I was hatching an escape plan and the escape plan for me, I figured out was real estate. And I got into real estate. I started investing. I started buying houses. I met the woman who I married, who is a mother of my child, who I've been with for 20 years now, all from that one little thing. Work's been bad, right? That changed my life. And it doesn't have to be that way, but that's the one that got me saying, this life is no longer the yeah. life for me, and now I need to make a change. And so there's there's much brighter stories, but for some reason, I felt like that was the one that connected the dots on what we're talking about. Yeah, so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, it just, I have been saying now, I think for, I don't know, it, it took me until about, I'm 40. It took me, it took me that many years to figure out that this dichotomy that we live in, right? We The, the world is a dichotomy because there's negative and there's positive. That's how electricity works. That's how, that's how the universe works. You have to have these equal and opposite. It's literally physics. And so it's so important. I, I just have to emphasize to the audience and people that when you hear the story like that from Jonathan, the negative was necessary for all of the positive in, in, his, in his life in this transition that he that he made. Um, amazing story. I definitely got chills uh, hearing that. Uh, another part, uh, you know, a contrarian phrase that you have here that I, I got to ask you about. It. I just love the way your brain works. Um, how working dumber not smarter is the key to ex exponential growth. <laughs> Should have told myself this in high school. <laughs> Man, the, the thing is, you have to have a certain level uh, of ego, uh, of bravado. You have to have that if you're going to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to have grit. You have to be tough. You have to have that whole uh, rugged individualism. Yep. And that's what gets you started, but that does not keep you going. And it, it actually will hurt you if you're trying to grow a business and you keep that mentality. And so for me, what I have looked to do in my growth, and, and I wish this is one of the lessons I would love to teach myself at 20, so I could be much further along now, but it, it goes back to that who you surround yourself with and getting around the right people and, and, and getting uh, around different thinking. That, that's the kind of stuff that you have to do to, to get yourself moving in, in the right direction, man. I'm losing my train. Of <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. It's, it's, uh, it's just an interesting way to think about it. Here's the way. So here's here, the way let, me, let me, let me bring it back. I like to be the dumbest person in the room. So yeah. this is where I learned it, right? So getting around smarter people then sometimes put you in a position of being the dumbest person in the room. And that feels uncomfortable. That's okay. That discomfort mm -hmm. makes you grow. And I use that to grow myself personally, right? But it was even more powerful when I began using it in my business. And what I mean is that, yes, I can write good copy. Yes, I could build a landing page. Yes, I could do all this stuff and I'd probably do it better than you. That's what I would say to half of my team, right? But doing it better than them keeps me stuck at the same level, right? And so I like to put smarter people in place and let them figure out how to do things now. So instead of, you know, the world says you got to work uh, smarter, not harder. I say you work dumber and hire smarter. Hire smarter people, let them do the work, and you stay dumb as you can <laughs> doing the, what do I do? I get to sit here and talk to you. I get to do a little bit of writing. I lead my team. 
they do all the work, man. They're smarter than me at operations. They're smarter at me than pr at production and all that. And so that's why I say the secret yeah, has been botched. They told you to work smarter, not harder, but it's really hire people that are smarter than you and you just stay dumb and in your lane. And that's an ego thing. Most of us probably won't want to call ourselves dumb or <laughs> say that everybody in the room is smarter than us. But to me, I think that's the only way to grow. It's the smartest way to be humble. I think that's the smartest way to be humble is you are recognizing your weaknesses, understanding your strengths, right? So if you have the if you have the balls to be an entrepreneur, if you have the guts to do it, but maybe you don't have the smarts to do all the technical stuff. And then but then there's also just the comfortability. I think I think you're sort of doing two different things with your ego. You're recognizing you know your shortfalls and then you're having enough of an of enough of an like a an ego recognition to where you're saying, I need to delegate. Because you can't grow unless you delegate certain things, right? In, in that sort of way. The, the other thing I thought about, I, I was, I was, I asked that question because I was just curious how you were going to answer, but, but obviously, and then it made me start. To, I mean, your questions even have me thinking. So even with the how working dumber, it's like I'm actually really thankful about all the times I worked so stupidly and learned and tried to do things the wrong way and then paid for it and then learned the lesson. You're, you, it's basically you can't do dumb and dumb. You got to do dumb plus smart in the way you just said, or dumb plus smart in the way I just talked about where you at least learn the lesson. But if you're doing the double negative here, it, uh, again, it goes back to this positive and negative again, you know? You need the polarity. That's right. Yeah, 100%. Uh, talk about the law of borrowed belief. Oh, man. that that uh, That's the reason why you and I are here today, in fact. And that's the reason why I invest in masterminds, mentors, coaches. And, and that's why the most important relationship in my life exists. I mean, dude, when I was <laughs> when I was uh, in my first mastermind, I, I was running a real estate training business. It was my first online business. And at the time, real estate was in the toilet. People did not care about it. And I was doing podcasting. Brother, I've been podcasting since 2008, okay? Oh, wow, you're yeah, right. It's been a minute. If I have more hair, you'd see that I'm old, <laughs> right? But the thing is, I didn't really give any any thought to it because I was, uh, I was doing podcasting from my heart with people who had helped me, and I wanted to help them reach more people. It was just a thing where I was doing it for, for that purpose is to give back. Mm -hmm. And at that mastermind, Every every break, somebody else would come up to me. And like I said, I, I was a little fish in that room, but yet all these big fish were coming up to me asking me, hey, I heard you doing a podcast with this guy, that guy, the other guy. Now, how do you do that? How do you do that? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just do it. I, I, yeah. you know, I play my thing and, 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 and I do it. And I, I thought nothing of it. And, and it was one of those times where my wife, Cupcake, says hey uh, do you think do you think that maybe the the podcasting is the business and maybe not the real estate training so this goes back to right words right person right time mm. okay so uh oh hadn't really thought of that do you think we could really do that and she was all yeah we could absolutely do that you're already doing it you already have a team i didn't believe in myself she believed in me and i said well let's try it let let okay you believe Let's try it. We gave it a shot. And today, brother, we work together in this business that she believed before I believed was possible. I had to borrow her belief to make it happen. And then it became my belief. And this happens over and over, whether you have a coach, a mentor, a partner, people see in you when you're around the right people, they see that light in you and they want to nurture it. And sometimes you don't believe in yourself, but you have to borrow their belief pretend it's yours till it actually is because that's how you're going to break through plateaus no oh, that's beautiful i love that borrowed relief that's fun uh, so you mentioned the podcast i would love to transition into that tell us why you start tell us when why you started the podcast factory and and what it's all about man it's just been uh, a blessing actually because it actually started with me just rapping with friends i was the one with the technical skills to make it work mm -hmm. before anybody knew dude when i got into podcasting you actually had to plug an ipod in and download files and then carry them and now it's just like push button everywhere you go yeah. you can just push a button and hit play so so it, it's a different world but it was because of that i i had some people who had 
really changed my life in marketing and entrepreneurism and all of this. And I thought, hey, let's share this with more people. Let's help more people get this message. And then people started asking me, hey, can you help me? Can you help me? That's when Cupcake tells me, hey, this is a business, right? And I'm like, I start, dude, you, when I first started the podcast factory, I was on eight times a week. I was co-hosting eight shows with my friends, man. I was just committed to the garage, uh -huh. this thing. But it's because I didn't know it then. Now I have it, the words for it, right words, right person, right time can change your life. The work that we were doing was changing lives. And I'm not one. Look, you ask me what sports I watch. I'm going to tell you, I don't watch sports if I can't play. Thanks. And this is that, right? I don't, I don't complain about the world. I get in there and I do something to change the world. And it's with the work with the people that I'm helping. It's having conversations like you and me right here, uplifting. This is it, man. This is my mission. And so I get... I get to do this as a business. I get paid for this, man. I'm getting paid for this. Can you believe it? It's fantastic. Yeah, I can. I, the, the the amount of energy you and I are just of the exact same wavelength. Uh, you know, I, I'm honestly sitting here like not even believing it. It's it, I'm of the same exact mindset. I don't have time to complain. I don't have time to complain. I'm here to crush. You know that that's what I'm here to do in in the world to do as much positive things as I can do in the very short blip of time that we have. So on that note, we're running up on the half hour, Jonathan, I have two questions that I ask every, every podcast uh, guest here. First one is knowing what you know now, and if you could go back in time to when you first started your business, what is one piece of advice you give your former self? Yeah, that's an easy one, man. It would have been like, I, I spent a lot of time buying software, buying info products, buying education, and that's good. That's good. And it has its place. But if I could have it all over, brother, I'd be buying access, buying access to the right people, to the right groups, to the right thinking. So that one piece, network, network, dude, I don't write this stuff just for fun. Mm -hmm. I believe this, you know? Yeah, you absolutely do. Jonathan, uh, your energy is fantastic. You're, I love your faith. Keep up the good work and everything you do. If people want to find, follow you, listen to the show, where can they do that? Where can they get a hold of you? Yeah, I'm going to give you two quick things. Number one, if you want to start surrounding yourself with better people, better messages, better thoughts, go to the podcastfactory.com forward slash client showcase. You can see the, the tab at the top. There's 90 plus shows on there. We select our clients. So if I don't think you're doing something that's amazing or that I can help you with, if I don't believe in your mission, you won't be on there. So go surround yourself with some good thinking. Number one. Uh, number two, give Lance a rating on this show. Give him a review. Let him know what's up. Tell him you love this or you hated it and why. <laughs> and I think that that would be pretty fun. Beautiful. Jonathan, thanks so much for your time. God bless your journey, buddy. Uh, we really appreciate you being on the show and, and thanks for everything you're doing. Thank you, brother. It's been a pleasure.